spousal support and alimony. This is probably one of the more important topics in the divorce cases that I handle outside of valuing uh, the business or the assets. And what spousal support or alimony is, is the payment of support from one spouse to the other after the divorce. In some states, there are now formulas for the amount of alimony and the length of time that is paid. Florida, as of the recording of this, does not have a formula for alimony. Uh, this is being recorded in uh, January of 2017. So if you are listening to this after that time, you might um, check in for some updates on the, uh, the website, brucepa.com, because there's currently an alimony reform bill being p- proposed that might change the law on this. But um, with alimony, uh, the key issues basically are, will alimony be paid? How much will it be if it is paid? And how long will the alimony be paid? So on the first part of this, will alimony be paid? There's a few core concepts that I'll take you through. Alimony is a a very complex topic, especially with how the law is here in Florida, but you can boil a lot of the most important information down to a few core concepts. And the first concept is for alimony to be paid, there has to be both a need for alimony and the ability to pay alimony. The person asking for alimony needs to need it, and the person who would be paying alimony actually has to have the ability to pay it after um, taking care of their own expenses. If one person does not need alimony, or the other person does not have the ability to pay alimony, then there's usually not going to be any alimony. Um, Second big picture core concept is that the need for alimony or the ability to pay alimony can be determined based on what a spouse is capable of earning if their actual earnings are lower than they should be. And what I mean by that is this. Somebody cannot just decide to, you know, as a divorce is starting, to not go to work anymore and not get paid and then turn around and say, hey, hey judge, I need alimony to pay my expenses because I don't have any income. Or, um, on a similar token, they can't just quit their job or purposely get fired um, in order to be able to say, hey judge, I don't have enough money to pay my spouse alimony. The law kind of sees around that. If it's proven that somebody is capable of making more money than they are currently, then their need for alimony from their spouse is going to be determined based on that higher income level. They call this imputed income. Same thing if uh, the person trying to pay alimony, or I guess better described, uh, trying to avoid paying alimony is making less than they could be making. Um, The divorce court judges will impute income to them in the amount that they could be making. Basically, they say, hey, you can make whatever you want. You want to be a school teacher when you've got a law degree, you can go teach math class at the local elementary school, but we're going to treat you like you're making uh, lawyer money when it comes to figuring out how much money you can pay your spouse in alimony. So it's kind of a a tricky thing to deal with proving at trial. It's not automatic. You have to hire uh, vocational evaluators and and put on the right evidence to prove what somebody's capable of making. It's it's more complicated than just walking into court and saying it, but... um, the need and ability to pay is, is based on the actual or the um, capable earnings of, of the spouse um, if they're proven. Core concept number three is alimony is only paid from income with very few exceptions. Basically, the income from all sources of a person is considered in their ability to pay alimony or their need for alimony, and that includes if they have investment accounts or assets that can be earning a rate of return, um, including IRAs and and other tax-deferred investment accounts. If if somebody has money that could be making money, then that is considered part of their income for analyzing their need for spousal support or their ability to pay spousal support. Core concept number four, once spouses are leaving the marriage with 
a lot of money, divorce court judges are less inclined to order alimony. So, you know, there's case law down here in Florida that says if you're going to have a few million dollars after the divorce, you, you really don't need alimony. Um, this part of the law is not crystal clear, but it's pretty persuasive, especially with uh, most of the South Florida judges that I deal with. Another core concept, um, by statute, alimony typically cannot result in one spouse being paid more than 50% of the other spouse's income. In other words, um, the law in Florida does not allow for somebody having to pay every cent they own to the other person so that the other person can live in a nice house and they have to, you know, live under a bridge. It's just not how it works. The law limits the amount of alimony absent exceptional extreme circumstances to um, half of the spouse's income. So how much alimony will be paid? If you really wanted a, a general formula um, for Florida alimony, um, if the person paying alimony has the ability to pay every last dime, the general formula would be alimony equals uh, expenses minus the after-tax income of the person who needs alimony. So, and these are very just simple examples, but if somebody's expenses are $4,000 a month and income is $3,000 a month, then the alimony would be $1,000 a month. That's the expenses minus um, the after-tax income um, equals the $1,000. Um, and this formula, it's I'm just trying to give a basic example, but it assumes the expenses of each person are reasonable and in line with what the expenses were during the marriage and that the other spouse has the ability to pay alimony. If there's not a need or ability to pay, there's, there's not going to be alimony. But this is just a simple illustration uh, to show you the, the concept uh, behind alimony. Um, when you look to the need of somebody for alimony in a divorce here in Florida, you have to understand that need is based on the standard of living during the marriage. If you know you lived a Honda Civic lifestyle during the marriage, then you're not going to get alimony that's um, going to provide for a Ferrari lifestyle after the divorce. And Sometimes you need to have a, an accountant get involved in these divorce cases where alimony is being contested and they'll actually prepare what's called a need study, which is a study of how much money was spent on different categories of items in the uh, end of the marriage to determine how much um, each type of expense was for a spouse um, and that's used to determine how much the spouse will need after the divorce and alimony does not you know, cover every single luxury of life, but it's going to cover most of the things that you and your spouse were spending money on during the divorce historically. So how long will alimony be paid? Um, in some states, there's currently a formula to determine how long uh, the alimony uh, payments go in Florida as of now. There is no formula. It might be coming, so you know, stay tuned with the current status of the law. But uh, in Florida, the the current way it goes is um, alimony is going to be categorized as either permanent, meaning it goes until death, remarriage, or retirement, or something less than permanent. And how this is all determined is based on the length of the marriage. If you have a marriage that's longer than 17 years, then typically um, the alimony is going to be um, permanent alimony, which goes until death, remarriage, or retirement if alimony is needed. Um, and, you know, when a marriage is less than 17 years or permanent alimony is not awarded, the judges in Florida have discretion to determine how long the alimony is paid kind of a rule of thumb I usually tell my clients is 
Alimony is usually going to be paid about half the length of the marriage and shorter marriages, basically long enough for somebody to get back on their feet and earn enough money to become self-supporting. In marriages longer than 17 years, um, typically the, the alimony is going to be permanent if there is a need for it and it's going to go until death, remarriage, or reasonable retirement. This is something that you're going to need to talk to your lawyer about because there's a lot of specifics and nuances in the law with this and depending on exactly where you live which state which judge it's going to be different that's why they're trying to get uniform alimony laws here in florida right now but uh, this is a very fact intensive analysis but just in, in generalities if you have a marriage longer than 17 years and you need alimony usually that's going to be permanent if you have a marriage less than 17 years, then the alimony is usually going to be at least half the length of the marriage. It can be by statute up to as long as the marriage, but you usually don't see that very often. So, can alimony ever be changed after a divorce? The answer is it depends, but it certainly can. Permanent alimony um, is somewhat of a misnomer uh, because it terminates upon uh, death or remarriage of the person who is receiving the alimony or the death of the person paying the alimony or upon the retirement of the person who's paying the alimony if the retirement is reasonable. Um, also, alimony can be reduced or terminated if the person receiving the alimony is not actually uh, married but is cohabitating basically living with a significant other and it's a it's kind of a tricky analysis to prove all that but um, you know what you need to understand if, if you're receiving uh, permanent alimony is it can change in the future and uh, in many cases the same goes for the other types of alimony uh, all of the types of alimony will end if the person who is paying it dies um, or if the person receiving the alimony gets remarried uh, and if there's cohabitation of the, the person receiving the alimony with a significant other, then that can be subject to termination as well. When it comes to the alimony ending upon somebody retiring, usually that retirement has to be at what's deemed a reasonable retirement age which is usually in the age 65 to 67 area unless somebody has um, you know a profession to where historically people retire a little bit earlier and um, they don't have the ability to work in any other field um, but you know the modification of alimony could you know fill a whole hour with all the nuances of it but you just need to understand if you're getting permanent alimony or any other type of alimony that it's not necessarily uh, set in stone forever it is hard to change um, but the law does allow it to be changed if circumstances change um, the burden for somebody to change alimony is pretty technical but they basically have to show that there's been a change in circumstances that is substantial unforeseen permanent and involuntary somebody's not uh, allowed to uh, just work less uh, and say they don't have as much money to pay alimony um, and alimony is not meant to allow the other spouse to save money either. So if it's shown that somebody doesn't need as much money as they said they did in their divorce and they're saving money, then that can be a basis to change support. But it is an uphill battle to change the amount of alimony. And uh, the case law in Florida makes it so that you know, people just can't settle their divorce, agree to pay a certain amount of money, and then show up the next day and try to wiggle out of the deal. It's, it's not as simple as that, but the alimony can be changed, and that's the important thing to remember. We here at the Bruce Law Firm hope this video has been helpful to you and briefly want to highlight a few other resources we've put together that might be beneficial as you think more about divorce and try to learn more about it. Uh, we have a website, uh, divorceinformationbooks.com. That's divorceinformationbooks.com. 
and when you go to that page you will be able to download um, all of the books that our firm has made available for free um, on different topics related to divorce, getting organized for divorce, controlling a difficult divorce, divorce strategy. We've got a Florida law guide and a Florida procedure guide on there. Um, a load of helpful information, all for free, that uh, you can download and read in the comfort of your own home and also um, request for us to mail to you for free. So check it out, divorceinformationbooks.com. And uh, we have another website, it's uh, hurtforthelasttime.com, and that will take you to our law firm's guide on how to divorce a controlling or narcissistic husband. Uh, we represent both men and women at the Bruce Law Firm, but one of our particular areas of focus is representing women who are leaving an emotionally abusive relationship from a controlling um, husband who has a personality disorder. Uh, it's a very unique type of situation that we like to think we do well and we've put together a book um, on uh, that particular type of issue that any women in that situation would uh, certainly benefit from. Um, in terms of what you do now, um, a few action steps at least suggested um, by us. Um, before you do anything, if you haven't done um, it yet. Uh, you should go see a really good therapist and see if it's possible to save your marriage or at least um, come to terms with whether uh, for you the best thing to do is move on from your marriage. And if you don't know any really good therapists, we have a website, staymarriedflorida.com, that has a lot of great ones in the South Florida area. If you don't see a therapist in your location, please reach out to us and we'll do our best to connect you to one. Um, a few different steps going forward. Uh, number one, before you get divorced, you need to try to envision and define um, the life that you want to have after the divorce and come up with a strategy for um, how you pursue the divorce. And we have a book on that, um, controlyourdifficultdivorce.com, we'll take you to it. Uh, the second thing uh, you need to be doing in conjunction with um, finding out the type of life you want to live and trying to figure out how you approach the divorce is learn a little bit more about the laws that apply to um, a divorce in Florida and you're doing that right now. Uh, we've got a book that covers everything. FloridaDivorceLawGuide.com will take you to it. It's a free book by the firm. Um, the next thing you need to do if you're starting to feel that divorce really is the right option for you is start getting organized. There's financial information that you're need, going to need to gather. Um, it's a little bit of work, um, but uh, it certainly can be done and should be done before the divorce process starts. Before you see a lawyer, you need to uh, do your best to get organized for divorce and go to getorganizedfordivorce.com. We've got a book uh, just on that uh, particular topic. It's geared towards women, uh, but uh, just as helpful towards men, so check it out. Um, and uh, the final step before you do anything, uh, you should read our book on um, divorce lawyers and how to find them, all you need to know about divorce lawyers. It's all about divorcelawyers.com. That book highlights situations for when you uh, should consider having an attorney to help you with your divorce, how to go about finding an attorney that's right for you in your particular situation, and then how to work with that attorney and make sure that um, they're hearing you and understand uh, your goals and that uh, you're working efficiently with them so that the costs are as reasonable as possible. Um, if this video was helpful to you, we'd certainly love if you could uh, share uh, the video uh, with anybody you think might be in need. Divorce is difficult, but it's much easier when people have access to the information needed to dispel the myths common to divorce. There's a lot out there on the internet and it could be kind of scary. We like to think that uh, the videos we've put together on our website and on our YouTube channel um, are going to be helpful for everyone. So please share. Um, if you're seeing this and you have a question that comes to mind, please do not hesitate to send it to us. We will do our best to respond to your question. Um, send an email to questions at brucepa.com. We'll do our best to answer it. 
Um, sending us a question does not create an attorney-client relationship with our law firm. Um, you know, we're not your attorney just because you send us a question, but if you do send us one, we'll do our best uh, to respond, and uh, it might even be something we can turn into a follow-up question and answer video similar to this to help other people in your situation. My name is Christopher Bruce and my firm is limited to divorce and family law in South Florida and you know there's a lot of great lawyers um, in the South Florida area. Uh, we like to think our firm um, is pretty good at what we do. If you think we might be a good fit for your situation we welcome um, your inquiry. Uh, what we do is we have a consultation and strategy session typically um, to determine if we're the right fit for our clients and in that session we do our best to give a client um, an understanding of all the laws that apply to their situation. We answer all of the client's questions and we give them an actionable strategy. It's uh, very helpful um, for uh, learning what your rights are. And if you'd like to set something like that up, you can call our offices at 561-810-0170. And there's a nominal charge for the meeting, but uh, we like to think it's well worth it. Um, just as a little bit of a disclaimer, this video is not a substitute for a competent divorce lawyer. You should consult with a qualified divorce lawyer before you take any action. And this video does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and the Bruce Law Firm. We hope this uh, video was helpful. There's uh, more on the website and on YouTube. Thanks for watching.